Uh, Olga Lemon, can you tell us a little bit about your research? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, um, I'm working on cultural psychology and I do research on silence and emotions. And I am interested in what are the different functions that silent experiences have in our everyday life. So I collect data basically from three different sources, in a way. My first source are books, because I'm very interested in theoretical psychology. So my main data is to read a lot <laughs> um, and try to check what are the gaps in those theories I read. The second is a little bit ethnographic, so my data I collect with my eyes, with my mouth, asking questions, listening just kind of exploring outside and seeing how people live and how they react to silence. Like in cultural psychology we say that our laboratory is outside the window or outside the world. And the third main data collection is that I got to teach a course for master students in experts in team at Antenio. And we had to be silent for half an hour every morning with different activities and the students feel diaries. So and they report how they were doing it. And after they report um, what happened, I asked them to rewrite what they experienced in a poetic style. And after the course was over, after they, gotten, they have gotten their grades, um, because of all the ethical considerations, I emailed them and I say, asked them who would like to donate the diaries to me. And then I checked those narratives in the diaries. Yeah. Like, uh, in very simple words, you have to read the diary thousands of times. Like, first I try to read it and have a screen of what is this about. Uh, then, I am very old-fashioned, so I have tried to use Envivo and other softwares, but I am very fond of pencil and paper, so I print, I transcribe the, the diaries into the computer, and. Uh, and then I print them and try to check with different colors. Okay, what are the categories or what is uh, the main topics, the main feelings, since I'm very interested in feelings. But uh, then, before moving to one first participant to second participant, I try to see the changes through time. Like, the diaries where the students wrote every morning and afternoon for three weeks. So I try to check the variations in time across each student like intra-individual analysis and just afterwards I will do the inter-individual analysis. When you work uh, theoretically, your work, uh, your work is uh, more inductive than deductive? Yes, yeah. or it's something that in cultural psychology is called, or in semiotics, it's called abductive logic. Uh -huh. okay. So it's, it, it's inductive but not just inductive. It's kind of, you pay a lot of attention to what is happening, but you, can, you cannot lie or say that you, you don't have a lot of knowledge before. So, yeah, it has to do a lot with uh, philosophy in that sense. You try to read a theory and be very critical to that theory. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's a little bit deductive because you have to read a lot. But when you look at the data, you try to look at what is happening in reality as if you didn't see or didn't know. So, yeah, that's what we call abductive logic. Okay. It's like a paleontologist. Like, uh, that is how case studies come up as well. Because if you think of paleontologists, to, to get to know that the Tyrannosaurus rex existed, you just needed to find one skeleton. You didn't need to, oh, I need 1,000 uh -huh. uh, dinosaurs to know they exist. This is how we try to abstract. Look at the skeleton of things. Well, the main limitation is that the way I am approaching the research is quite new. So there's not a lot, no, there's, there are not a lot of points of references. This has been also the strength because, um, because of course, it's nice to, wo to work like kind of in a new field or doing things differently. And uh, another limitation, of course, is always time. You know, you always would like to do more or then you have a new hypothesis and then you would like to check this and that, but you have to submit the project anyways. And um, yeah, another limitation, but also strength, I think is always like half half, is that I work a lot with arts and uh, I'm trying to, to combine arts and psychology in a way that works is 
challenging. So yeah, I think my main quality but my main defect is that I'm so passionate about what I do. So it's hard to turn it off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah.